everyone, you are watching The Chrissy B Show and as usual we have loads and loads in store for you today as well as celebrity news in a moment with Ian Pelham Turner. We're also going to show, I'm going to show you my latest challenge that I did in Wales which was a girls road trip. I'll also be answering a question from a viewer tonight. We have our fitness tip from Jane Rafter in just a moment and also on today's show we'll have um, Megan Gregoire, makeup expert, joining us on the show to give tips and to demonstrate different types of makeup styles, colours and looks in preparation for perhaps a special date night or an event coming up or perhaps have a special evening planned with your partner or maybe you're single and hoping to meet someone special. Either way, we'll be trying out different makeup looks and styles and ways to make the best of colouring and face shape. So, if you want to get in contact at any point during the show, you can email Chris at chrissybshow.tv. But before we speak to Ian, who's here on my right, ready with the celeb news, let's go to Jane Rafter's fitness tip. Hi, I'm Jane. Welcome to your fitness tips for the day. So today I'm going to show you how you can tone up your upper body as well as work your core, your abdominals. Now, a lot of women shy away from press-ups, which is a real shame because they offer so many benefits. They can tone up your shoulders, your tricep and your chest and really improve the strength in your upper body as well. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you how you can make them really easy. So if you're a beginner to press-ups, all you need to do is start in a box position like this and then take your nose towards the floor. Try not to go like this though. You need to take some body weight into your arms and your shoulders. Now, as you start to build up strength, all you need to do is drop your hips towards the floor like this, and then there's more body weight being loaded into the uh, chest and shoulders. And when you get really strong, in a few weeks' time, you can practice some full press-ups. So all you women out there, you really must do press-ups. Don't shy away from them, because they're so good for you, I promise. Another great exercise is a side plank. So I've got all my weight in this shoulder, but I'm working my core as well because something's stopping my body from collapsing and I've got to use all the muscles in my tummy to keep me lifted. Now this is quite challenging again if you're new to exercise. So if I were you, I'd put your bottom knee on the floor like that to begin with and it really lessens the weight in the shoulder. Just a little... Uh, safety tip here make sure you don't collapse into your shoulder you need to lift yourself up and hold it for as long as you comfortably can and then obviously change sides two really good exercises for you there to tone up your upper body and work your core so enjoy those and i'll see you next time Thank you very much to the lovely Jane. And now I have the charming Ian Pelham Turner. Hello. Thank you. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I am bouncing. We've missed you since I'm the last I'm bouncing. Show. <laughs> I'm bouncing. No one give me any chocolate tonight. You won't no. get me off the show. <laughs> I won't. I won't. You're dangerous with chocolate, aren't you? I'm dangerous with chocolate. Now, here you've got loads of silly news to share loads, with us. Loads of stories all together. Okay. So first of all, I want to play a game with you. Oh no, okay, I wasn't prepared It's for okay, this. don't worry. There's okay. <laughs> you'll enjoy it, you'll get through it, you'll get okay. through it. So it's called, Do You Like? Mm -hmm. Okay, so first of all, do you like shoes? Do you like Italian shoes? Do you like high heels? Do you like Italian fashion? Yes. Okay, well then, the first part of the show tonight is all about Victoria and Albert. Um, then they're having a major exhibition of anything from Versace, Italian fashion for the past 100 years. Oh. So you can teeter on down, we can both Hi. teeter on down on <laughs> our heels. And yeah, we, I didn't know you wore heels. Well, not, not, <laughs> since, not since the court case anyway. Uh, and you, you'll see so some of the latest great fashions down there. Okay. So question number two is, do you like chocolate? Yes, unfortunately. Oh. Me too. Oh, Me too. Bit of a downfall, well, isn't you'll it? be pleased to know that the major chocolate people in Britain, Thorntons, have actually sold 149 million pounds worth of chocolate in the past year. You're joking. It's the most massive amount of sort of chocolate, and their highest period was Easter last year. And don't I remember that period? Did you, did you buy lots of? <laughs> Didn't I just? Oh. Oh, Easter eggs. Easter eggs. They're my downfall, <laughs> they're my downfall. And finally, on mm. do you like, is would you like to be a Bond girl? 
Bond girl. You look like a Bond girl. Oh, stop You it. look fabulous. Only if my husband was James Bond. Would, would you like to be a Bond girl? <laughs> well, if you want to be a Bond girl, uh -huh. then at the moment, there's a special uh, Bond exhibition going to be held at oh. the Film Museum mm -hmm. from the middle of March. And so you can actually go down and you can sort of sit on the Bond cars, you can oh, pose, you and you pose oh, okay. so well. You <laughs> pose so well. <laughs> so I, 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 I can see you against one of the old uh, golden rollers or something mm. like that. So that really is, you know, it's a good sort of opportunity Mm -hmm. this year to actually see how the Bond movies were made oh, right. and, and exactly the, sort of the type of products and the type of things yeah. that have made Bond the history. Where, where is that taking place? That's at, at the Film Museum mm -hmm. in London. Okay. So it starts from the 20th of March. Oh, wow. So I thought you'd like that. that. <laughs> you'd like, I can, <laughs> we I can see. We should go do some filming there, Absolutely, we, we can do that. So that's, that's really, do you know? But now... I've got a message for the ladies. Can I just talk of to camera you for can. a second? Talk to the ladies. At can the I talk to there? the ladies? You can. Ladies, this is a message for you. The reality is, are you finding now that men are taking over the bathroom in the mornings? <laughs> Do you find that your moisturizers are being pushed away? and their hair gels, and their lip gels, and their fake tans, and their hair gels, everything is taking over? Well, there is a new person on the block who is trying to stop all this. Really? You now, ladies, have a champion. Do you know who your champion is? No. None other than Lily Allen. Really? <laughs> Lily Allen is now campaigning for men to be men. OK. OK. I, mm, I'm a bit like on two sides with this, on both okay. sides, because, well, my husband has his hair gel and stuff. He does have his products, moisturiser, not anything like too feminine. But I actually think it's nice because he looks after himself and he smells nice all the time. He always smells good, which I love. Lily Allen so. says, no aftershave for men. No, no, I love no aftershave. No aftershave for men. She says her husband takes six seconds in the morning <laughs> to look in the mirror and go. So we think this is something that perhaps all our lady viewers can oh, talk about. Yeah. Do you find you've got problems in the morning getting into the bathroom. <laughs> Let us know. Let us know all your problems that you're facing <laughs> from, from all this happening. Yes, you can Facebook us, actually. Facebook <laughs> you. And the, we, 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 we came across this most amazing story this week, and it's a medical story, but mm. it's a medical story with such a difference. Uh, a lady called Zoe Hitchcock, 29 years old. Uh, she was out shopping in Oxford Street and she had a cardiac arrest, she had a heart attack. Oh, now, I used to have a heart attack when my ex-wife used to go shopping in Oxford Street. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> but, but, but at least I survived. Yeah, yeah. But she actually went into full cardiac arrest. Oh, God. And the paramedic managed to sort of bring her around. And there's a thing called the golden hour in anything to do with heart attacks. Mm -hmm. And so she went to this special hospital um, and met a, a gentleman called Dr. Gareth Davies. Dr. Gareth Davies is, is the world specialist in this, and he actually reduced her temperature. And he brought the, the, the temperature of her brain down four degrees and actually saved her life through it. Wow. Uh, and he did it through some sort of uh, salt fluid that can actually in decrease your body temperature. Uh -huh. And apparently, if you can get through this golden hour, your chances of survival... On 95%. So none of all that business that people yeah, yeah. normally do? Yeah, yeah. none of that business. You, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no, no. Where, where, where's, where's the music? <laughs> where's the music? <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's what they did. They, he oh. actually reduced the temperature that's amazing. inside her body. Uh, and she's now, she's now got a, a heart pacemaker. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and uh, <laughs> she's, she's still able to walk down Oxford oh, Street. Still, still, still shopping. Still, still then, shopping. Is, yeah. Still shopping. I think so, we've got a couple of minutes left and maybe one more short okay. one. Yeah. OK. Right. This is a perfect one for you. And don't take this the wrong way. Oh, no. I don't, are, don't know what he's going to say now. Go on. <laughs> are, are you a saucy girl? I like ketchup. So does another <laughs> lady. There's a lady in Britain called Melissa Ibbotson mm -hmm. from Ipswich. And Melissa Ibbotson from Ipswich probably holds the record for having the amount, consuming the amount of 
tomato ketchup anywhere in Britain. They reckon that on an average year, she eats 70 kilos oh God, that's ridiculous. Of, of, the sub, you know, of the substance. And not only does she eat it, she actually has it raw and pours oh, it. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> and pours oh, it no. in, yes. So, you know, sometimes, I don't know, are there people out there who have the same type of food <laughs> fetishes? I don't know. But she absolutely adores uh, tomato ketchup. I, I actually remember watching something about a, a lady. She, was, she loved baked beans. And yep. she had so much, or was it tomato soup? I can't remember, one or the other, but her, the bottom of her feet were red because she had so much, and her palms. I thought going to say, had hinds on the no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Completely red. It was really weird, but she just could not stop eating. I think it was tomato soup, actually, and she used to even bathe in it. Crazy. Well, the, this girl, apparently, she can go to the poshest restaurants. I would hate to be a boyfriend. <laughs> can you imagine? Just imagine going to Marco Pierre White or somewhere like that, or Gordon Ramsay, you know, and, 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 and just say, where's the tomato ketchup? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. But she's, she's actually been known, if, if there's not tomato ketchup in the restaurant, whatever she is, she's been known on. to walk out again. Oh, dear. Oh, well. Well, I'm not, I'm not that bad with ketchup, I have to. Ian, you're going to stay with us. I'm going to stay with you. After the break, we'll, I'll be showing you my challenge that I did in Wales with a few friends of mine, and then we'll be back to Ian with some more news. So join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Now, before we get back to Ian, this time with some celeb news, let's take a look at this video of a road trip with some friends of mine. Hi, everyone. And today we are on our way to Wales on a girls road trip. So I have at the back with me, I've got Motti, our photographer. I have Excel, our presenter, producer. And of course, we have our lovely camera lady, Inez. Woo! Okay, so we're currently on the M4. We have another maybe three hour journey to get to Wales. So we're going to be staying in a bunkhouse, something that I've never done before. And um, hopefully we'll have a wood fire apparently. So it should be great fun. So do check in later. I'm going swimming in the freezing cold. <laughs> bolognese that we brought from home, frozen, so we thought ahead, we thought how can we save ourselves time, frozen bolognese, and just put it on the hob and repeat, perfect solution. I brought my emergency jar from home with little bits and pieces that you can cut from places like your sugar and your salt and stuff, just in case, but they have salt here, so it's fine. Now have a look at this. This one here was actually made by our lovely Chrissy B. She can cook Italian bolognese uh, that my sister's husband showed me how to make. Who's an Italian chef? Show off. <laughs> Mama Bear is serving. Mama Bear. Clever Mama Bear. I'm here with Thea James, who is the customer and events liaison here at Celtic Camping. Hello, Thea. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Would you please tell us more about this beautiful place that 
you know we're all surrounded in because it's it's an absolutely you know it's, it's like a home away from home i have to say can you tell us a bit more about this where we are yeah well um celtic camping is situated on the st david's peninsula um we are a 250 acre farm um we are in the national parks uh, which is actually one of the only national parks which is on the coastline in the UK. Um, it's, uh, the actual site is its original form, so we pride ourselves on the fact that when you come to see us, we look like a farm. Do you have a lot of city types coming out here then? Because, I mean, the whole point of being the city type, if I can say that, is busy schedules, tight, hectic schedules, never have any time to chill. Do you really often get city types, maybe from far cities, like probably London and, and all that, or is it just local residents? We get hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of people like that. Um, and in fact, when people come in, quite often they'll come into my office, um, I will book them in, and they will be in fast forward everything they want to do, they want to do it as fast as physically possible. And the first thing I have to say to them is, you're on holiday <laughs> and calm down. You can start your holiday now. So actually, it's, um, it's one of the pleasures of what we do actually, to be able to come here and to just say, relax, look at where you are, look at the space and it's wonderful. <laughs> very well treated and it has been a fantastic experience to come and try out this wonderful part of the world that everyone seems to be so chilled out and very friendly and I think it's rubbing off on me I, I think I think it is rubbing off on me I mean we have a lovely fire here today it's just keeping the place lovely and warm and I think um I don't know just the season for chestnuts or marshmallows do you have many marshmallows to throw off on me before I the fire or does that have to be open camping I have got some in my fridge which I'll give to you <laughs> Thank you very, very much, Thea. It has been a pleasure, pleasure, absolute pleasure to have this conversation with you. And thank you very much because we're having a swell time. Oh, I really want to go there again. It was such a lovely trip. That I can was. see that. As long as you don't expect me to go jumping in icy cold water. I think water. you should. It's um, quite invigorating. At my actually. age, and my <laughs> build, I've built this perfectly athletic body. <laughs> I think you'd love it. I know, I know. So, some celebrity gossip. Yes, do you want to hear some celebrity gossip? Tell okay, me. Okay. Well, the first bit we can exclusively reveal is that Meryl Streep is in town. Oh, did you see her on the tube like you did Harrison Ford no, the other day? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I'm never going to tell you that story again. <laughs> but Meryl Streep's in town at the moment yeah. and uh, she's filming inside the Houses of Parliament. And this is oh. the first time ever they've ever allowed filming inside the, the Houses of Parliament. They've never allowed it before but they're trying to create a fund now to actually help the renovations of the Houses of Parliament. Mm. So they've now allowed, for the first time ever, a film crew inside. And she's doing a film about the suffragettes, the British suffragettes mm -hmm. at the moment, with a lady um, called Carrie Mulligan as well. So the okay. two of them are doing a thing on the suffragettes. About. So it's quite interesting. So if you see any film activity going around the Houses of Parliament... You know who it is, Meryl Streep. It'll be Meryl Streep. Yeah. And uh, surprise, surprise, Katie Price, okay. our famed lady of the, of the, um, Bless her. Of, of, of the British front, um, is, is friends again with Kerry Katona. Oh, they are. They're okay now. They are they? friends again. They're, they're, they're like this again. For, for now. They're like <laughs> this again. Well, they have to be because they've got the same agent. Oh. <laughs> so they keep on bumping into each yeah, other literally anyway. To. But um, there, and it, there's talk now. There's talk in the Stevie that uh, they're going to do a reality TV series together. Oh, you're joking. No. What it's going to be about yet, I don't know. But they're both, if I remember, horse fanatics. Mm. So they may be doing something <coughs> on show jumping. Can you imagine it? <laughs> it's probably not. It's probably just 
them, their life, what they do. It could be, it could be. And uh, one of our big X Factor ladies is uh, now doing uh, going on tour. So she's back in London uh, with the X Factor tour with is some that? of the others, Sam Bailey. All right. So oh, yeah, Sam Bailey, the, the, oh, yeah. the person. Oh, she's, she's looking fantastic. But she's fabulous, isn't she? She is. And, she's and, 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 and she's she like a really genuine nice she person. She really as well. deserved sort of doing this. So Sam Bailey is back in town and the X Factor is going out on tour. Right. at the moment so okay. some of the others uh, nicholas is there uh, luke is there as well mm -hmm. so they're, they're recreating the x factor who was your favorite i think sam Bailey was good but i actually i can't remember her name but i actually liked the black singer as well mm -hmm. the girl singer who um i thought was absolutely fabulous yeah. you know and i think she was the only one for me who the actually, young one the younger one yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. i think she was the only one for me who actually name, who, who actually sort of um you know could compete against sam for voice range mm. she was superb so next comes this story this confession this week from georgia may jagger daughter of mick jagger mm. and jerry hall and georgia this week has been talking about her days when she was at school Wow. and how her mother always used to come and pick her up and take her to school in the mornings and she'd be totally beautifully dressed she'd always turn up in fur coats <laughs> totally coiffured hair make up the full thing and Georgia was always trying to get her mother just to turn up like a more normal, a normal. mom Aww. you know and, and sort of dressed down and that but Jerry Hall uh, bless her heart um, I think she's one of the nicest ladies yeah. ever I ever worked with and I worked with um, Jerry Hall all about 10-15 years ago on a movie mm -hmm. um, and she was just going through the divorce in fact it had just been announced that she was divorcing Mick Jagger on the morning that I actually turned up on set and I was working for Aww. a newspaper yeah and she was the most gracious lady really? I think I've ever met you know she she gave an interview she gave a quote because she knew uh, mm. that we would sort of talk about it so she was very, very gracious in that way. But the, the thing I really loved about her, she, she always knew where my camera was, even when we were filming, and she just sort of flicked I'm her still hair. still posing, right? She, she, <laughs> had the, she had the full flick, the full pose. Oh, nice. So she was sort of fabulous as well. And another story that's coming out can, of the Can you say in 30 seconds? In 30 seconds, Gary Barlow has just written a new musical. Oh, has he? Absolutely. Oh. I didn't know that. Ah. Oh. Let me see. So we're, yeah. we've got some really good things happening at the moment. Yeah. Okay. And uh, if that. we get another chance, I'll talk to you about Christian Bale. Yes, we're going to come back probably a bit later on. But don't go, please don't go away. Stay here because I want to hear all about the celebs. I can't move. I've too much chocolate anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after the break, I'll be joined by makeup artist Megan Gregoire and also her model sister who's going to be having the makeup done on her and they'll be showing us exclusive romantic beauty tips for that special occasion whether you're single or you're with someone already so do join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to the Chrissy B Show always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show. So now it's time for some makeup tips with the lovely Megan over here. Hello. That, Hello. By the way, is also my makeup artist. And she's wonderful. I love her. And also we have her lovely sister, Cynthia, who's our model for today. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. <laughs> now you're both into fashion in some sense. You're into yes. the makeup, aren't you? And so we're a good duo then. Yeah. And you do, what, what is it that you do? Um, I came here to study uh, fashion. So right now I'm working in media and styling. Okay. Yeah. So both very creative here. So Megan, tell us what, what kind of look you'll be doing on Cynthia today. Well, Chrissy, today I'm going to be doing some techniques as well as making Cynthia into a glamour goddess. And I'm going to show you how you can master uh, some makeup techniques and also um, show you a bit of contouring because I okay. find that that's a, that's a good thing to have under your belt as well as um, the perfect cat eye flick okay. and it's going to be with a tool that you cannot find in a makeup store. Oh really? Oh, I'm intrigued now. <laughs> okay, so what are you going to start with? Because you already put some foundation, haven't you? Beforehand? Yes, we've already got a bit of the base. So I'm going to show you just basically um, how to 
define the eyebrow because a defined eyebrow really changes the look of your whole makeup. And I'm going to do it uh, using a pencil as well as the shadow so you okay. can see the difference there. Okay. And I, I heard that quite thick lashes are in fashion now. Has that changed already? This was sort of. Thick lashes are always in. Really? Because I remember there was a time when everyone was in them really thin and. Well, that's, see them. that's gone, that's gone and window. dusted. Mm -hmm. So basically, you have to start about not at the very, very start of the brow because you want it to blend in. So about 20% in. And I'm using short feathery strokes and I'm just going upwards here. And then short downwards. And you want to end with a tip there. You don't want it to be thick, so you want it just to be at a, end at a ballpoint pen there, um, not a thick end. And don't be uh, weary if you get heavy handed. This is an eyebrow brush that you can use just to blend that brow pencil, making it a bit more natural and defined. So you can see now, if you look that way. Let's get a just nice close up so we can see. Just how polished and finished. Can you turn a bit to the. Yeah, there you go. Cynthia looks just with that one defined brow. Mm. So it really, really brings that definition and frames the face. Woo. So I also have um, a powder which I'll demo here. And it's um, ashy dark brown. So I'm just going to start again with a flat brush here, angle brush. And Start again, not at the very start, but just about 20% in, short feathery strokes upwards. I like the, pa I prefer powder because it's already kind of blended. Mm. Um, so it's, a, I find it's a more natural finish than the pencil, but both are fabulous. So uh, you can see how I've used two different tools, but mm -hmm. similar, Same, yeah. effects. similar effects. So it's really just, if you're on, you know, if you're on the go, sometimes a pencil is yes. more practical, practical. Okay. So you can see that again. Now regarding the shape, because what, does that depend on like your face shape, how you would do your eyebrow shape? How you can tell uh, about um, what kind of shape that you should be doing, there's, there's the bridge of the nose that you can put the pencil straight line there. So mm -hmm. if you have that curve, it should be a direct line from that side of your nose bridge and just correspond that way. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see, you know, if you've got a, something in your reflection, just as a little indicator to, yeah. okay. for yourself. But if your eyebrow naturally does not arch, um, which, you know, some have the, the round 60s eyebrow, mm -hmm. then you just go in, uh, you know, outward and it should make that shape okay. just naturally. So if, if Cynthia was doing a 60s eyebrow, it would just go. So it's kind of like the, you call those geometric shapes, the half circle, right? So you're imagining that yeah. half circle. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean, we know what you mean. School was, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so you could just follow it that way, making that okay. rounded shape of the eyebrow. So we're going to blend more than one shadow and the rule is with um, blending more than one shadow on the lid is to put the lightest color first okay. because once you've added a darker color you can't go back okay. <laughs> so basically if you you know gradually get darker um, that is the the safe fundamental to mixing more than one color on the lid so we're just so a nice light color first, and you cover the whole area under the eyebrow. Yes, that's it. So yeah, I've actually added foundation first to just get rid of. Sometimes oh, there's right. that, um, you know, some of those veiny type mm -hmm. um, 
Bl not blemishes, but you can see Your veins. Basically. The veins. <laughs> you don't want to see those no. veins. So we Especially we, when you're tired, they tend to show up a bit more, don't they? That's it. So just yeah. a little pop of foundation. Okay. We'll make that clean clean palette for your eyeshadows. So I'm just gonna add a bit more, pop on a bit more. So you wanna get it nice and even. So that now, you is don't a day, see. a day look you're doing for us here, or is it a night look? Uh, it is a day look, mm -hmm. and we can bring it tonight with adding more uh, definition, okay. um, which we'll show you when we do the, the liner. So there, now I'm going to choose a medium color. Um, so you can choose, uh, let's just choose that chocolate. So find the socket there and this is a blender brush so I'm just going lightly back and forth so it's just in the crease there that you're in the crease okay. and kind of bringing it down working Are you it paying attention Ian blending it <laughs> so blend 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 so you can see how I started from the out outside uh, inwards and how I'm getting that uh, little bit of extra off my brush by bringing it down into a, okay. a V kind of seven mm -hmm. um, motion there. So if you just look, so you can see how she's got it's a uh, you know definition. Mo you know most people for a day look think one color. I don't want to look too heavy. I'm not yeah. going to add yeah. anything. But really, it's not too heavy. It looks great. absolutely yeah. not. It just gives a little bit of definition to have that pretty you know, pretty effect and it's not too much for a day look. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just court anything you do, you want to follow up okay. again on the other side. Okay. So we've got about three minutes to break. Okay. So if we don't get to finish in this part, guys, don't worry, because they are going to carry on during the break and then <laughs> yes, <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll teach you a few more tips, but we'll carry on for now. Definitely. So I'm just going to show actually good you. good to have the scene this done on someone else, because I know you always do mine for me, but... Okay. But your eyes are closed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my eyes are closed, so I can't see. Oh, they <laughs> should be, yeah. Sometimes you get the, the peaker. Mm. But yeah, you can see, and if you just look up, and you know, it doesn't hurt just to bring a little bit, sometimes, okay. into the lower lash line. Just very subtle. Just a little bit mm. to bring it all together. So that's it. Sometimes you see looks where you know they they look a bit unfinished or top heavy. Just a little bit of the eyeshadow oh. that you're using, drag it into oh, that's there. A good tip. Yeah, and so we're just it looks more even and more balanced. Yes. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Mm. So just add a little bit. What well, we're gonna bring it's a it. Much darker one. Now, this is it? a much darker. This mm. is a slate black. So I'm just gonna show you starting at the outer corner here. Always outer, darker outer, and just bring it in mm. and blend. Okay, it's looking really nice. Yes, <laughs> so you can see. So you can see where it brings the eye to that nice shape. So if you were to start on the inner, it wouldn't have such a pretty effect. Any particular colours for eyeshadow that are in fashion at the moment? Um, the, on the catwalk, what do we see in Paris, Cynthia? We see. Well, yeah, you both went to London we went and to Paris it. Fashion Week. That's it. <laughs> Busy ladies, and they've been recording everything that they did there. It's really great. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. We we've seen a lot of burnt oranges, um, mm. reddy browns, as well as some vibrant, Gosh. yeah, some fluorescence. Okay. Um, not not block color fluorescence, but just, just that pop, pop of eyeliner. Mm. Okay. There's um, you know different techniques that the makeup artist use but definitely the neons were even trending really? okay. absolutely All yeah right, so we're going to be seeing more of those we're going to go to a yes. quick break so you can carry on a little bit and Perfect. then come back with a few more tips for us okay so do join us after this break really don't forget to subscribe to the Chrissy B show always aiming to show you the happier side of life you can find us on YouTube Facebook and Twitter
Welcome back. So we're going to get back to the lovely ladies in just a moment. But first, we'll just a quick, a quick uh, news story from Ian, and we also have a success story which you've you got my success story coming yeah, up in a minute. But I, I was just going to say the makeup. Yeah, are makeup, you doing it? Makeup artist survive us, don't they? Don't, let's be honest. <laughs> you know, in our world, we have to be sort of. Uh, yes. And uh, I, I always know that when my time is getting close, you know, and I'm getting older, when the trowel comes out, you know, and <laughs> and they literally lather it. But I, I think what probably one of the worst experiences I've ever had was uh, last year doing a lot of royal events and I was hopping from one TV network to another mm -hmm. and I was on, on a Sky network and Sky really lays her on <laughs> my makeup. So I'd, I've done my show, I'm rushing out, the car's ready for me and I'm rushing down Oxford Street afterwards and everyone's looking at me. Of course, I've left the makeup on. Oh, so. that's it. It's really obvious, <laughs> yeah, so, isn't it? So, uh, so, so I was getting some very strange looks. Oh, you poor love. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Now, tell us about this success story that you recorded for us. The success story is, is all about two young ladies from Eastern Europe mm. who have really created something very, very special uh, in Westfields, okay. uh, in Shepherd's Bush. Uh, and, it, and it's how they've really t taken a big opportunity. They've started a pop-up store that is yeah. selling so well. And it's wow. one of the top stores. And they're very young, aren't they? Well. And they're should, only should they're 25 and oh, 29. 25. I they to me, that, they're, they're, they're kids. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were about 18 when I saw them. But let's take, let's take a look at this video for a few to see. Today, I'm in a store called Amica. The store contains young designers' clothes, which was the aspiration and ambition of the two girls who own the store. As you can see, it not only contains clothes, but designer jewelry and other items as well. This is all part of a unique plan to bring fashion to young designers and help them start out in life. Uh, originally I started the online project which was Amoka Design House and uh, then I came up with an idea to organize a pop-up shop and like me I met Victoria uh, last summer um, who also wanted to do a pop-up shop so that's the point where we decided to do it together. Well, I'm Victoria and I'm coming from Estonia. Uh, I came to London only one year ago when I started my master degree in Central St. Martins. And along the way, um, by visiting different events, I met Mariana and I'm also really lucky. So in December 2013, we opened this store here in Westfield and uh, we're representing more than 35 different up and coming designers here. We have designers from Moscow, from uh, St. Petersburg, from Dubai, from Italy, uh, Korea, China, obviously the UK. So interesting to work with designers from all over the world to see their approaches and uh, our price range starts from 20 pounds up to a couple of thousand. We have everything for everyone and that's the secret to our success. Well, besides our lovely store here in Westfield, we also organize many different projects for our up-and-coming designers. For example, just recently we started collaboration with one of the Knightsbridge boutiques where we sell a couple of our uh, designers there. Yeah, it's in Beecham Place and for one of these designers we recently organized a fashion show during London Fashion Week, which was a great success. So this is the basically story. a story of our success. <laughs> Oh, they're so lovely. They look so happy, don't they, Ian, with everything they've so done? They're they an absolutely fabulous couple. I just yeah. love them, you know, because that's the type of spirit, entrepreneurial spirit, mm. that kids should have today. And, and they've got it in bundles, they really that's have. That's great. I wish them all the best. Lovely. OK, so let's get back to the ladies here. So what have you done during the break? I have done a bit of contouring on the side, a cat eye flick, and I'm not sure if I finished up with the so darker colour. that. OK. Can you see that? So you we can see. So I'm going to show you um, and look at the other side so you can see the difference. So basically, you can see on the other side, the other side, that there's no contouring, and this mm -hmm. side, it's a bit more chiseled. Yeah. So I'm going to show you, um, I'm just going to apply. Um, the cat eye. So a lot of people, Christy, get discouraged with this liquid eyeliner. <laughs> and I have to say, it's most likely the end flick that scares people off. Mm -hmm. And how to get that perfect 
slick at the end. And I'm going to show you how you can master that. So here we have the end of the flick. So I'm just bringing it out upwards. It's not perfect, not perfect. Back down to the eye. Okay, so let's see. Okay, well now I'm gonna purposely mess this up. Okay. You're oh. brave doing that on TV. Oh, oh oops, oops. <laughs> Basically, we have the ultimate tool that is found in an art shop. You hold that for a while just so to get this. And mm -hmm. it is just a small, I wonder if you could see it. Now that is not an earbud, is it? It's Very not an earbud. It is, it is, it looks like an earbud, but an earbud that's lost a lot of weight. Yeah. So it is very minuscule. It's very precise. And what you can do. Where'd you get that from? Um, the art shop. Okay. Yeah. So you can then. Get some of this. Yeah. We could just put a little bit on there to get it. So you can, you can put makeup remover uh, on that. And just bring it directly down there. Oh, all right. That can also help you clean up that makeup because you don't want anything past the end of the eyebrow. All oh, right, okay. So I'm just going so to use another comes one. Up to the end of the. Yeah, so you see how ends. out that was, and yeah. then now I'm just shaping it downwards. Okay. So you can get that precision mm -hmm. with that and just have it be clean and perfect. Like you had a makeup artist mm -hmm. come to your house to do your cat flick. Wow. Or did you stop at the art shop <laughs> and get a skinny earbud? <laughs> that is that the question. Serious. So now to carry on, contouring, contouring. Things that you have to remember, make a fishy face, so the sunk make a fishy face. Which is? <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> Who doesn't know the fishy face? But okay. And so at the top of this bone, I'm just putting a bit of concealer here I've chosen, mm -hmm. and bringing it down and up, right there. Just very. Lightly there. So one thing, Chrissy, that you have to remember is not to go past this line. Okay. Why? Because anything past that is going to look dirty. Right. So if if you know you go past that, you can clean up with a bit of foundation. Mm -hmm. So let's say we go past that, or it looks not as chiseled. Have no fear. So that's instantly giving cheekbones there. That sunken. Mm -hmm. Definition, I've lost 10 pounds in 20 and seconds. And not had any teeth taken out. And not had any teeth taken That's hilarious. <laughs> people do that, you know. Have you heard of that? The people, people Hollow like cheeks. take just out their take teeth your... and their wisdom teeth just so they could have like those. Cynthia's going to demonstrate the hollow look by taking out her dentures right now. Come on, Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> or did she have some contouring that makes you look yeah, it does. like that? So isn't it's that different. brilliant? So you could see just, I could see it in the camera. Yeah. And it's very simple. I use just, you know, uh, concealer, but you generally want to go about two shades darker. This one is very, very dark. Um, I used a little bit in terms of intensity just to show the effect for the camera, yeah. but okay. two shades darker that you want totally okay. to, you, you know, to do that. You can add um, even some contouring, the bridge of the nose, right there. Which does what? Does that make the nose? Makes it a narrow. Narrower makes Cynthia have a more chiseled, three-dimensional. She's already got a perfect nose. By the She's way, got though. a perfect nose. <laughs> We've got Filipino French nose. All right. So this makes it look more French. <laughs> I find I find it looks more French when it has a bit like that. So I like doing that there. Also another um, another tip, and these Chrissy, these are great. These flat brush tips, they fit. They they are the contouring. 
um, brushes that I really love to use because they fit into the contouring places with such ease. So another tip here is to go directly on the eyebrow here. This is getting a bit, and if you want, you never would have thought that, but so you just want to bring the shadow there oh. and you can see that it makes those two lines. Let's have a look, because your hands in it. Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> so if you look that way, so you mm. can see it just brings that chiseled look out. Now yeah. that is very dark. I wouldn't use that dark, but it's just for, just for demonstration see, right. that okay. you can see that. You've only got a minute left, oh, girls, and I wanted to see my Oh, I know, I know. Got I know. I've got time, okay. <laughs> if you want to become an instant <laughs> bronze goddess, pop a bit on this. Collarbone, just glam, glam, glam. Seems just That's lovely to be stuff, that the. Is. Yes, it is. You've isn't got that on, haven't you? So have I. <laughs> we all have it on because we're all oh, glam, <laughs> all shimmery goddesses. That was the theme for tonight's show: was glam. Okay, that's wonderful. So, thank you so much, ladies. You're welcome. Great makeup that's tips there. Thank you very much. Ian, thank you so much as well for the lovely news. No problem. And we'll see you again very soon, right? Okay. And even Megan, I'd like to see you very soon as well. I'll, I'll see you soon anyway. <laughs> okay, so that's it for today, folks. I do hope you have a wonderful day. And if you want more information about the show tonight, you can visit the website, chriscbshow.tv. And also all the information from my guests is there too. So we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye for now. Hello. Hi, Hi. welcome to Niesta. Oh, sorry, <laughs> my name is Neil. Hi, dear. lovely to meet you. Hi, lovely again. to meet you. Yeah. One minute, one minute. <laughs> okay. Hi, welcome to Niesta, my name is Neil. Hi, yeah. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, do it again.